In this video, we're going to look at using step with a for loop. So if you haven't looked at the basic for loop video first, or you're not familiar with for loops, you should do that to start with. So I'm assuming you already understand the basic for loop, and now we're adding an extra feature, which is the step. So what I've got here is a little um, example that illustrates the use of step uh, by building the multiplication table. And let's just take a look at the code here before we look at the illustration. So what I have is a simple program that has one for loop. And you can see that each element of the for loop is uh, gotten from the user interface by reading from a text box. So we're going to read the starting value for the for loop, the ending value for the for loop, the step value, which is the amount that the loop control variable gets incremented each time we do the step, uh, the loop. So instead of adding one each time, which is what you get if you don't have a step element in your for loop, instead we're going to add whatever the step is. And um, the M is the number we're going to build the multiplication table for. So what our procedure does it first uh, prints the words beginning the for loop and tells you what your starting value, ending value, and step are. And then it goes through the loop and it prints a line of the multiplication table. So let's just jump over to Excel and take a look at this in action. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to use 5 as my multiplication table. And uh, let's start by doing a step of 2. So the default, the thing, if we didn't use step, would be 1. And we'll start at 1 and go to 0, 016. Okay, here we are. So let's think about what's happening here. We said to start at 1. So the first value of j is 1, the loop control variable. Uh, if you think about the code, the first thing that happens is we set j to the starting value. Now the next value of j is 3. Why? Because we added 2. And we're doing that each time. So you can see we went from 3 to 5 to 7 to 9, 11, 13, 15. Now the next value would have been 17. But because we said the ending value was uh, 16, 17 is already bigger than 16. So we finish the loop at that point. We don't do the loop. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, let's say we went in steps of 3 instead of 2. Okay, so now going in steps of 3, we're still starting at 1. So we're going to go 1, 1 and 3 is 4. And then adding 3 each time, we got 7, 10, 13, and 16. Okay, well what if we started at 0? And here you can see, uh, again, going to 15, we start at 0, then 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So um, I could keep playing with this, uh, doing something similar. But here's another interesting feature. I can actually use a negative step. Let's try minus 1. Now when I do that, uh, the starting value has to be larger than the ending value. So let's try starting at 10 and going down to 0. Alright, so we started with j equals 10, then 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The next value would be minus 1, which is too small, and so we stop. So this is important. Notice that if you use a negative step, your starting value has to be bigger in contrast to the normal way where the starting value is smaller. Okay, let's take a look at the code one more time now. So you see here, we're starting j at whatever our starting value is, going to the ending value, using the step, okay, and then we just print our line of the multiplication table, we print m, the x, whatever j is, equals, and then the product of j and the multiplication. All right, now just to drive this home entirely, let's try running it with the debugger. So uh, let's do step in two. Oh, it's not going to let me. Um, there we go. 
All right, so I'm going to use, uh, let's use 3 for M. Let's use a step of 2. Let's start at 4 and go to 10. Okay, so here we are. And going to do F8 to step through. Okay, so I read my starting value, 4. Read my ending value, 10. My uh, step value, if I can get it to show, it's 2. And val is 3. And the string is the string 3. Okay, here's where we print everything. All right, so now we're ready to start here. So, again, the starting value is 4. Now, J hasn't been set yet. It won't be set till we actually execute this line. But you can see our ending value is 10 and our step value is 2. All right, so now we're starting, and J should be 4 now. Let's just check that. Yes. So I'll print the first line with J equal 4. All right, next J, we're adding 2. So our next value of J should be 6. Let's check. And here it is 6. Okay? Next time it should be 8, right? Because we're adding 2. Here it is 8. Then 10. Now 10 is also our ending value. So that should be the last time the loop executes. Because the next value would be 12, which is too big. And in fact it is. And we're done. Okay? And let's see if we can see our form, and here it is, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right, so I think uh, this should illustrate things for you, but um, go ahead and play around with this example. It's a nice way to see what happens when you use different steps.